a full review actually twice <laughs> with two Seat Ibiza today on Article Fuel, your number one resource for in depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars today with me, with Thomas. Exterior, interior, and the driving experience. One with DSG, dual clutch transmission automatic, and also with the manual gearbox. And we also have a focus on the diesel engines here today because most of the European markets still accounts for one quarter to maybe sometimes even half of the sales of the total model lineup. Really depends on the market. We will fill you in with all the details here also with the FR version, Mystery Blue, and Desire Red, two favorite colors for this vehicle. A lot of details for you in general if you want to know more about the car, if you want to buy it, if you already possess one or just interested in this very vehicle. Full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! So mystery blue would definitely be my color. That is really something would be the Thomas blue, which we have here as a running gag on Auto Fuel. The front of the FR line is a little bit stronger and lower part also comes with a sport grill. But in general, the new Seat Ibiza has a very sporty face, even sportier than the previous generation. So it's a little bit wider, a little bit longer with the new MQB A0 platform, also stiffer, so sportier to drive. It comes with uh, with a halogen, sorry, with halogen headlights as a standard, and then you can optionally also get the full LED lights and also the LED daytime running lights. We have turned them on there right now. Pretty spectacular, also, and they are also used for the turning indicator in the front, at least. That when you activate the turning indicator, it's basically replacing the, the, you know, the front signature. So, a very interesting solution. 4 meters 0 4 or 13 foot 3 is the total length and 15 16 17 18 inch those ones here are the top rims and they look pretty spectacular on this vehicle that's for sure this one here is also equipped with the dcc the dynamic chassis control the adaptive suspension we experienced that one when we drive the vehicle there's design on top of the door handle and well this color here is really sparkling and I think, you know, I want to get your opinion from that too. In the small vehicle segment, this is meanwhile, I think, my design favorite, even more, of course, in the blue one. Then the rear is, I mean, rather classic from design, really elegant, but sporty at the same time, that's for sure. And of course, due to the new platform also, inside what we cannot see has been improved. What do you think? We also have beautiful LED taillights right here, FR batch for the sporty variant that also features fake exhaust tips right here. Well, you can argue about those. Uh, from distance it looks really massive, but again, they're again pure fake. That's the reason why, why they're doing that. They can then create the rear part very freely, just have the exhaust always hidden below that. That does save cost, and they can also do you know a, a, un, a uniform design, no matter which engine engine they are picking. So that's actually the, the reason behind it why they do that. But you know we get a lot of feedback that you don't like fake exhaust tips. Maybe they could just leave it like this. And I mean even without those, it looks quite sporty and nice from the rear, doesn't it?
So this is the key, you could also use it in a manual way if you like, but then you would have to peel off this part here. Usually it's just like this, closing it, just put it your hand here and then opening it for if you have the keyless entry option. So let's get inside here. In the FR we have leatherette cover on the inside of the doors and also here for the armrest, very well done. Red contrast stitches. The upper part is hard plastic because they say, wait, you don't touch that really, so we can save cost by that. What's your opinion on this? Mm, I can understand the argument. Then, a lot of room for big bottles. That's quite nice for a small vehicle. Nice detail right here. Seat stamped in this plastic part here, where you usually don't see it when the door is closed. Also in the FR, you have leather red also here on the lower dashboard. That's very nice with red contrast stitches. The upper part then again um, is from the harder surface materials. Then the steering wheel in the FR version, flat bottom, also sporty design, red contrast stitches on the inside. Yes, the FR is really a very nice trim to enjoy those emotional features. And of course the special seats, they come as sport seats, so this seat form. And the base one then has fabric on the inside and leatherette on the outside. And then optionally for I think what what about 400 euros you can get the Alcantara package. We have then Alcantara on the inside. Which one you go for, you can pick with if you prefer Alcantara or fabric. Both are sustainable seat materials without animal content. That's very well done. Sporty, visually attractive. And the sports seats you see here, they are wider. So also for taller people, they are really suitable and make the car more be or feel like a compact segment car than in the small segment. And let's get inside. That's of course easily done. Well, the FR also has a sports suspension, but since you can also get it with the DCC then here, um, well, it has a sportier setup, but then again, if you can switch between the DCC, you can pick your stiffness in riding anyway. More about that later. Seating position is indeed, you know, more spacious than in the previous generation, that's for sure, because the car has gained also in length and, well, Indeed, you feel rather like in a compact vehicle. Headroom, I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. And then, if you don't take the panoramic roof, you really have plenty of room left. For me, it would even still fit if there is the panoramic roof. The steering wheel can be adjusted quite easily. You see, the mechanism is that smoothly done that you can also just do it with one hand. Then, with menu seat control, you with Pump it up, y'all. They put it that I could say that. <laughs> I guess so. Um, then the turning knob for the back part of the seat. I know you guys are split. I'm from the fraction of rather, you know, like, um, you know, sometimes they have like those levers to control it. Some others prefer the knobs. I'm more this lever type of person to control the back part of the seat. And of course, here in the length. So a very comfortable seating position, especially for the sport seats. Um, you know, in the other review, we have also shown you the base seats. They also look fine, especially if you're a little bit taller, then the sport seats will really help you. And here we go with the interior overview. Everything is rather kept clean. Also, you know, this additional design line on top of the dashboard here again was hard, then but soft here with the leatherette. There's also a nice solution here for the FR line. Usually you have a decor element that is also hard, but then you can also pick different colors if you want it a little bit more colorful. But as we have compared those, this one is surely uh, also, you know, great in style. This one is the optional 8-inch screen, but it comes with the excellence trim and the FR trim, then you have the bigger screen but in this one here you still have two knobs volume and also for zooming in and out for example zoom more deals to that the steering wheel again from a compact shape very good control right side you control the small digital screen there soon say it will also offer full digital instruments for all of their models and the left side then for the volume control for example here in the lower part you have the classic climate unit still easy to control that's not done with a screen a lot of people will like that and in the lower part usb ports too and also inductive charging possibility and here then the six speed manual gearbox we will also drive that as i said earlier we'll drive the dsg today but also the manual gearbox nice emotional feature borrowed from the jaguar ideas 
that you have this heartbeat for the start engine button then the drive mode selector will be here we will talk about it when we drive the vehicle you also red contrast stitches on the middle console still a manual handbrake you know when you have to do some drifting you got it the cup holders are a little disappointing because they're not adaptive and quite shallow so taller bottles mm, not so good for that then room for the key to have a power supply and very fixedly attached this armrest. Not every small vehicle has it and it's not in every um, version. So if you really want to have the armrest, then try to check your configuration or the price list or your, with the dealer that's really included and some space there below. So, and on special request, what about the mirrors here? Here, by the way, you can, for example, put the parking ticket and then, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, we, we received some uh, inquiries that we also show this part here when you, you know, make your one yourself even more beautiful. And in this case, no light for this vehicle. Well, but I think in the small car segment, we also hardly see that in general. Details to the infotainment system. Today in Spanish, shout out to our Spanish fans. Hola, como esta? This is the app view you get first. Um, you can always get back there if you click the lower right part, but you also got those hotkeys for, for, for example, for um, this information for the vehicle or then the GPS on the top right. And it works quite well. You can zoom in and out pretty easily. You can either connect your phone via Bluetooth like this, hotkey on the left, or also with the app connect. Then you have the smartphone mirroring functions Overall, quite satisfied with this, with the uh, whole system and was good here to control the volume here. Very easy from the GPS announcement and also you can set an auto zoom in and out. Um, you can zoom in like this as I showed earlier. But also still while driving you can use the knob and while driving that's, that comes really handy. I really like those instruments. They always remind me of sporty Audi models. They are flat, matte and white and... Uh, you know, it really looks clean, good to view, the speed, and just in the middle, well, the middle digital display, that looks a little bit dated meanwhile, but of course it does the job to show you the di digital speed and stuff like that. And the rear compartment. Here we go, and this is the biggest advantage of the new Seat Ibiza. I mean, look at that, there's even some more room left in front of my knees, and I was just yesterday in the Audi A4 estate and there wasn't a big difference. So for such a rather small car, really good package, a lot of room left. You can easily drive this vehicle with four adults actually. And you sit quite cozy in the rear. Even headroom is no problem. Here again, one meters 86 or 6 with one. The panoramic roof would decrease it a little bit. But you don't have to go for it. And the same design scheme also for the rear seats. Here also with the Alcantara package. Uh, Isofix on the outside seats for child seats. And you can also flip the seats from here. Uh, top tether then on the back part. And by the way, not sure if you've seen it yet, yet. For the seat belts here with the red contrast on the outside. Also a nice option. And also cleanly you can store the belts. So let's open the boot, right here we're flipping the logo. And then, well, it's pre pretty much standard size for a small vehicle, but well to use. The cover you can of course remove, even better than if you want to flip the seats, because then you would have to reach over here, that's not the most versatile solution. Uh, but it does work somehow. So here we go, and then it looks like this. Here, this is by the way the warning triangle, you can also remove it, you have an even surface then even transition but you can also if you want to have more room in the height you can put this one here down even works with one hand here we go then you have more space in height here but then you would have a spit step but then again they have made a nice transition here so interesting solution and below that here is the replacement tire with the sound system the optional one inside in this case 
and interesting how wide this hatch is opening, really high. That's good for me because I don't hit my head on that that easily and I can easily put things inside and get out of it again. The only disadvantage is if you have a very low basement garage or something like that, then it might uh, you know, hit the, the top ceiling. So you have to check out that. So just before we come to the engine, let me already tell you, this one here has 95 horsepower and you see there's drum brakes in the rear, which is, considering it's 1,100 kilograms of weight, sufficient from the braking power. However, if you have a stronger engine then, here with more than 15 horsepower, everything which is above 95 horsepower, then you also have disc brakes for the rear. So today it's about the diesel engines because we have tested the petrol engines in the earlier reviews. If you are really especially interested in the petrol ones, then later on also check those reviews out. Today the 1.6 liter diesel, 4 cylinder, you can also see it here visually, 1, 2, 3, 4. This one here, either with 80 horsepower, 5 speed manual gearbox, then also available with 95 horsepower. It can also be combined either 5 speed manual or the 7 speed dual clutch transmission. That's the red car behind us. And this one here, basically all the same engine, but a little bit different horsepower output. This one here, 115 horsepower and only with a manual gearbox, but then a six speed manual. And the petrol engine is a one liter three cylinder engine that has approximately the same horsepower lineup than the diesel engines, so three, three different choices. And then you have the 1.5 liter Evo engine with 150 horsepower that we've also tested in an earlier review actually uh, you know very powerful one and um, well there will of course be a consumption difference between petrol and diesel let's see how that one plays out really and as a last choice and i can really recommend that too there's also the cng engine one liter cng available um, that's actually a quite good and clean solution and also about this diesel here well it has the sdr cleaning of the nox so this one here you know, implement also in a small vehicle is very important of course because we want clean diesels if we want to drive diesel engines still and we will also ask an expert soon about the specific details about it because you know well, who doesn't know there have been a lot of problems in the Volkswagen corporations recently that's also the reasons why they also want to be a little bit more open about that now and still want to offer diesel to the customers who want it but then again with the SCR cleaning. And now we are joined by Holger Voll, head of diesel development at SEAT. Of course, we want to know how important is a diesel still for SEAT? Uh, as you know, uh, we are a Spanish brand and here uh, our Spanish market is uh, still a diesel market. Probably you know that a lot of uh, European uh, countries uh, still are having a good percentage of diesel engines. So uh, we are um, aware that it's still a need of the market. Of course the customers want to know, is this diesel clean? Okay, uh, all of our engines are fulfilling the actual Euro 6 um, emission standards. So the new features of our diesel engine now or this year with the new launch in the MQB A0 platform, uh, these engines are now equipped with AdBlue, as you know, with the SCR uh, catalyst and NOx after treatment system. This is the best technical um, thing we can do for our engines at this moment. And what else have you improved here for the new diesel generation in the Ibiza? Mm, we are still improving our after-treatment system using our oxidation catalysts and our diesel particulate filters. Still we are improving that system as well, ever to improve our Euro 6 standards. And so the only thing that will change then for the diesel customer is that you have to fill 
at Blue Inn. Uh, how does it actually work? What's okay. the what's the f fuel size for the at Blue okay. and how does, long uh, does it last? Our actual fuel size for the MQB A0 platform is about 12 liters of at Blue. And as you can see here, this is right uh, on the left side of our uh, filling. Um, tube you can also from diesel. Just you can you can fill the at blue liquid, uh, and uh, we are starting in Germany right now uh, to fix the nozzles uh, at the filling stations right uh, on the on the left side of the diesel of the diesel nozzle. You know, so I think it's uh, very perfect for our customers and easy to handle. And now to the driving part, and we start with the 95 horsepower version with DSG. This one here, as I said earlier, available both with DSG and with the manual transmission. So DSG is just one car here on this event that having exactly this configuration, and so we exclusively show you that. The DSG dual clutch transmission is of course always very comfortable to drive, so you just have to do nothing. You keep both hands at the steering wheel and that's it. And it's also shifting really fast. So it's really great also when you're you know, stuck somewhere in traffic or something. Um, <clears throat> you know, there have been some discussions in the past where they had some, some breakdowns of it. Uh, but uh, after that they said, you know, they change the oil there to make it more durable using a different one and um, so maybe you can also give your experience with the DSG to the community. That was rather something that was happening in Japan I think. Um, I haven't heard it so often from Germany for example. So as soon as you really hit the throttle by the way, sometimes even maybe shifts down two gears at once, so that can also happen. There are no shifting pedals here whatsoever. Quite often you do have that with the DSG, but that doesn't mean that you cannot shift manually because you can just put the driving selector to the right side in, in this manual mode, pull towards you, then you shift down, pull it up, and then you shift up. So this is, for example, useful when you're driving down a hill for quite a long time. You maybe want to use the engine brake and shift down the gear. Other than that, you just leave it in the normal mode. Here in the normal D mode, it's already now in the seventh gear and the car is running pretty, uh, pretty silently. Also, the RPMs are kept down now 94 kilometers an hour, so almost 100 kilometers an hour and we are below 2000 rpm from this 1.6 liter four cylinder TDI so that's also the you know the big strength of the diesel so you can keep it really calm at low rpms and still you always have a lot of torque ready also you can put it to the S to the sport mode then you have basically more rpm preload the car shifts up later and down earlier so if you ride a little sport here then other than that to save some fuel you keep it in the D mode you can then for example also set the cruise control and um, so there's also the ACC the adaptive cruise control available for this vehicle and then the distance is kept to the car in front of you it's a really useful option of course it's not that common with small vehicles yet but it's more and more coming that small vehicles are also offering that and it's really a good comfort feature for sure. So the noise insulation so far pretty good in the motorway I don't have to raise my voice that much that's also something they've worked on with this generation here something they've improved and what I also said in the initial review of the Seat Ibiza and especially here in the FR version because we have those sport seats, you know, with the Alcantara on the inside, leather red on the outside, and they are also a little bit wider. So especially with this seat combination here, the car feels actually bigger. So far, the previous generation of the Ibiza, you could clearly see this is a small size vehicle, and that's it. And here, when you have the FR setup, then you might sometimes think, hmm, 
maybe it's getting closer to a compact vehicle, especially when you have a little bit more room to sit in. And so there's not so much less comfort than you would be in the segment uh, above. That's, uh, that's really interesting for sure. The suspension is also doing a very good job. Here we also have the adaptive suspension with the DCC and then you can pick the different driving modes. For example, I can also go to the sport mode there. Then you immediately feel it's getting a little bit stiffer. It's more like, prop, 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 you know, well, on some sense. Um, that's useful, for example, if you want to do some winding corners and stuff. Other than that, you can also put it to Eco. That helps, especially in the DSG, because then also the gear shifting and the rolling of the vehicle, for example, is, um, is optimized. Um, so you can even save some more fuel. And well, let's have a first look at the consumption figure. Because so far, here by the way, now I see in the middle part, there's a small eco circle. That means that the car is sailing. And I've realized also the RPMs go down. So basically, the engine is somewhat shutting off. It's not using any more fuel then, although the car is still running. So that's really a helpful function to save some fuel. And always when I just let the car here again, you see RPM drops, the car is totally silent, and I'm saving fuel when I really don't need some more acceleration. So that's really a helpful feature for that too. Of course, motorway riding with constant speed is very good for low consumption. And well, this is also something what the diesel is actually about, you know? You basically get it to have a low consumption. So let's see, and at the moment here we are at 4.9, so about 5 liters. And well, of course it could always be lower, sure, but I mean, especially if you consider that the petrol engines here in the Visa, which were really fun to drive, uh, very cultivated, also really nice from the performance, but they had rather high consumption. So. Indeed, you do save a lot of fuel when you pick this when you pick the diesel here. So um, that is definitely a cut. Oh, there's some foil I really had to run over now. I hope it doesn't get stuck somewhere in the front grill now. We have to see about that. Um, yeah, so you really save fuel with the diesel engine here. Um, I try to remember what it was with the petrol. Um, I think it was at least some something in the seven liters. Uh, so two, three, maybe some of even four liters and one kilometers you can save with the diesel engine here. So in this respect, it also really does the job. And now also in the small vehicle with the SCR cleaning, that's of course also very important. Um, the prediction, by the way, when do you have to fill up the next at blue? So for the S, well, for the SCR injection, and at the moment it says it would be 8,500 kilometers. And if that really turns out to be true, I think you can live with that. So um, you now, if you have, if you have to fill it up, you know, every second time you go to the fuel station, it might be, you know, really annoying. But when you fill something like that up in 8,500 kilometers. I think that's that's relatively okay. It's also connected to having this rather small vehicle. If you have a bigger vehicle with more consumption, it will also consume more at blue, as it does with the fuel. And then you also have more hassle with uh, you know refilling it in this case. The steering, as always, is very easy to to handle. You don't have much resistance, and it's also pretty precise and direct, so it's really fun to drive the car around. By the way, now in this eco mode, when I'm going up the hill, I do lack some power because the engine tries to keep it rather in the, in the low RPMs. If you want more power then, you can always go to the sport mode. Even if you were in the eco mode before, just put the shifting lever, then you're in this sport mode already, and then you have a little bit more power to, to cruise around. So yes, I can definitely recommend the DSG. It's so much more relaxing to drive and it can be sporty at the very same time. 
Oh, so now I obviously lost the foil and the next car is catching it up. <laughs> yeah, really funny. Um, you know, what would be a reason against the DSG? Well, just the price, you know, because you always have to pay an extra price and then you always have to think about um, is it worth the thing for your own? Oh, nice. Blue 2CV. So, uh, we can also adjust the distance to the car in front of us, of course, if you want to keep it a little bit closer. That's also possible. Consumption is also dropping down just a little bit. And what I realize again now, when I'm going straight here on the motorway, maybe you do also see that on camera, um, the position of the steering wheel. I think it was last time also with the Seat Ibiza. And I have also experienced it um, recently in the Skoda Octavia. I'm not sure what, what about that, but maybe I have just like, my eyes are all screwed up, but to me, when I'm driving straight, it looks like I would be steering a little bit left. Thomas, cameraman, what do you say? Would you agree? <coughs> Probably right, I don't see it exactly from here. But it, maybe it, it is right, yeah. So, I mean, now I'm steering right and it's almost straight. So, that's a little strange, right? Um, and you know, nowadays they are uh, adjusted electronically. So, um, this actually shouldn't be a problem to fix it. So if you experience something like that, tell me in the comments. And maybe if you, you, well, actually it should be possible to go to your dealers and then that they recalibrate it or something. So, and I'll, of course, um, i ask again for it. Um, that's something that would really annoy me. I wanted like everything like 100% totally straight. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, but the good thing is, you know, we have two cars today, so um, I'll also retest that one in the other vehicle because sometimes you have just one vehicle where there's a mistake and sometimes it's, you know, maybe for the model type. So we will definitely recheck that. So, um, so far I've kept it in the low RPMs also that we can really see about the consumption because again, I think most important aspect with the diesel, if you're running really a lot of kilometers with this vehicle here, and want to have a relatively low consumption. So five liters is possible. What about when we want to accelerate a little bit more? By the way, 620 kilometers of range, it says now for the fuel, and again, 8,500 kilometers for the Add Blue. So let's set it on the speedometer. And then we can drop back a little bit also go to sport mode here, sport mode in the shifting mode. So and you know what about this flexibility on the motorway when you for example want to have a you know, overtaking maneuver something like that. Uh, how, how fast does that actually work? So let's try that. So let's try it again. So here at the moment is limited to 90. Let's just drop back to 80 and then just as 10 kilometers when I really flow it out. Plop, that's it. Yeah, we do hear the diesel then, of course. The reaction is um, quite spontaneous. So there's no turbo lag or something like that. Of course, it's useful when you are in this S, in this sport mode. Then you directly got the performance. And here you also see that the engine realized I want to have some more performance. Now stays in the fifth gear just when I put it to the D mode again, then immediately shifts up to the sixth and now even seventh gear, so two gears difference then, because then obviously the engine realizes, ah, oh, you know, Thomas is done with his acceleration test, so let's keep it calm and let's save some fuel once again. So, uh, especially considering, you know, the small size and the small horsepower amount of this engine, this really has some decent um, torque output and that's again another advantage of the diesel, that you have more torque when you have the same horsepower from a diesel and from a petrol engine, you always have more torque with the diesel. So it's basically the you know, more powerful and more efficient engine if you directly compare it. Of course, there's the thing that somehow like it sounds different. Um, I tend to drive petrol engines a little bit more 
in my favor because you know from the when you're driving slowly and from the low rpms maybe sometimes it's not really fast on paper but it sometimes feels faster or a little bit smoother and with the diesel where it sets in a little bit later and then really hammers it and of course that thing with the uh, with the NOx emissions again they have the S they are injection uh, here for and we also uh, talked about that with the expert so it's also meanwhile a little bit you know thing of philosophy and depending on for what do you use such a vehicle in most of the cases a diesel may be not that useful in a small vehicle unless again you are you know driving with it a really long time and you don't have you know time to recharge refuel a vehicle or so that often then it can also make sense still of course i mean driving wise surely a good one very calm very easy motorway vehicle and again as this one here is now also more comfortable also for taller people basically is a, is, a, is a fitting combination so if you for example would say Mm, instead of a Leon or instead of a Golf and you're driving like 25,000 kilometers a year and seeking for a replacement but which is maybe a little bit smaller and easier to handle in the city then this could be you know a reason to go for this very exact one for example or if you in general think you know you don't need such a big car anymore you know at some stage in your life um, maybe later or even earlier we do not need a such a big vehicle yet then it might also make sense again the longer you drive the more kilometers you put on the tires the more sense the diesel makes you know that's that's still the same um, might also differ from country to country just a little bit but in general um, performance wise and here for example I, know, I, I just hardly went on the throttle just going so smoothly up there uh, without even really demanding the engine pretty much so that really makes a good impression for sure the GPS by the way is also very well to follow while we drive um, one good thing also while driving that you can adjust the, um, the, the sound volume pretty easily and also the zooming in and out so that's also good software wise so now let's see when we're rolling at some point maybe the it's interesting let's go to the eco mode again because it's really different when i'm in the eco mode now let's see because so far i was in the d mode well we have the ac turned on now when i'm in the eco mode and then lift the throttle then immediately the uh you know the sailing or coasting function is being activated Funnily, by the way, as soon as I go on the brakes, it's deactivated. So this is then, you know, the primary function of the eco mode, that the sailing or coasting is always activated when it's possible. So I can recommend this mode if you really want to save some more fuel. Then you can be, maybe even go a little bit lower than our so far calculators, five liters. So pretty interesting in that respect. By the way, the car with the new MQB a zero platform is also 25% stiffer than the previous generation so it also gives you more stability on the motorway we also feel that so that's it for our consumption run and our especially motorway features as again when you got the car is diesel here probably get a lot of kilometers on the motorway so we thought that would be then a suitable uh, suitable part for this car but of course we also have some more winding roads for you and we could for example just take the other car for that so guys now we've switched the vehicle to the six-speed manual and also a little bit more horsepower 115 horsepower so we have more power but less support from the DSG. And one interesting finding is that when I accelerate really from zero, just, you know, slow speeds and stuff, uh, 
the engine sounds a little bit louder. I'm not sure if it's just a subjective impression. Maybe it's the case that the DSG itself can also somehow better, you know, do the like, clutch in and out and it's doing it a little bit smoother than anything that could be done by a human. That might be a reason for it. Definitely an interesting finding. Power-wise, you know, hmm, it's not too much of a difference already figure-wise. You know, this 20 horsepower is not that much. So um, it's not that it would be a super game-changer. Um, when you really hammer it, you do feel a little difference, of course. Then again, if you compare it, then the one with manual, the other with automatic, it's a little bit of a different style. I also have the sixth gear here. That one I would put in if I would just let the car roll on higher speeds. Other than that, the gears click in without big resistance. Um, however, it's not the case. Um, you know, sometimes, for example, we experience it in the Stoda Fabia, which is also you know one of the internal Volkswagen AG Corporation competitors here that the gears would have no resistance at all, they would be smooth, but then again, you don't have a real sporty feeling. Here, they um, have done both, with, which we uh, have recently also experienced with the Ford vehicle. So, it's not a hard effort to put in the gear, but then again, you also get something of a haptical feedback from the gear lever. And I think um, that's quite okay. Um, as soon as we go straight again, by the way, I really want to uh, check out the steering wheel adjustment if we also have the same problem with the little offset or if that's just the case for that very one vehicle. You know, especially when we're in the first gear, the DSG is somehow uh, less noisy. The combination then with the diesel really might be the case that you can finally uh, adjust it then when you have the DSG and gently press the throttle Whereas here you always play together with clutch and gas and somehow maybe you always apply a little bit more of a throttle. That could actually be. So, yeah, you have a little bit more boost when you push the throttle, that's for sure. You do somewhat still hear the typical diesel nailing sound. It's not on a super high level, but it is notable and they can also feel a sound difference then from the normal petrol engines and the diesel here. So about steering wheel offset, at the moment we're going straight. And it could be that it's maybe a little bit, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, I think it's somewhat the same with this vehicle. Mm but not exactly identical, maybe not as much as in the other vehicle. Uh, one reason for that, by the way, could always be, I told you the same in the Škoda Octave review, um, you know, when I look straight here and you have the instruments, the instruments are not exactly straight in the vehicle, you know, and then the problem is if the steering wheel is oriented basically on, you know, on the rest of the vehicle, not on the instruments. It looks offset instrument for instrument wise. So here at the moment, now going straight, I would hold the vehicle like this straight. I think we're drifting somewhat to the right. And then if I would align the steering with the instruments like this, we would definitely go to the right. So I think those are the two reasons. It seems to be that it's a little offset and then because the instruments are not exactly, you know, in line of your side with the road, that might be the thing that is stressing my subjective impression that the offset would be maybe even bigger. In general, to the agility of the car, again the FR with the sport suspension, it is uh, not that harsh from suspension wire that it would say it's too rough or something so it's perfectly fine also for everyday driving now we try to overtake let's see second gear 40 
fifties. That was not even halfway through throttle, so easy acceleration here also. And you feel with the diesel you always have some power reserve. So also when you're a sporty driver and want that power, it's definitely always there. Now again, six gear that is in for the cruising, for saving fuel a little bit more. Um, in this case, when you pick the DSG, it does not necessarily mean that you would consume so much more fuel with the automatic gearbox. The DSG can, can also actually be quite efficient. That's also an important factor. We also have the different driving profile modes here when we go to the Eco mode. Um, it changes the throttle input a little bit more, but it doesn't have such a big effect as, as I would in the DSG car, because then we also have this sailing or coasting effect. And the sport mode is basically the same for the suspension. You go a little bit stiffer then uh, when you have the DCC applied. But then again, as the shifting characteristics cannot really be changed, you know, that it doesn't have the biggest effect then on your driving part. So again, driving modes play more a role when you also have the automatic gearbox alongside. You, by the way, as uh, a little faster, left and right slalom, you feel how stable the car is, how well it feels to control, you feel that it's not, uh, you know, it's not really high in the overall weight. It's really a very fun car to drive. Um, and actually, I think all engines we've tested so far um, made the car fun to drive. I think it's also an important aspect. So. You will also be just fine with a base engine if you want to save some money in the, um, in the entry level price, for example, that's totally fine. And again, if you want more power and you're willing to invest a little bit more in the engine or in the overall car, you can, of course, do that. So, horsepower difference, somewhat notable but not really a must-have. Here, for example, when you go uphill, maybe if you have a little bit more load, then you would feel also the difference. Here now, also when I'm in the second gear, I keep the car ready to accelerate more. And, I mean, considering it's still a relatively small engine, it really comes quite good. For example, here's some 50 to 70, just in the second gear, look at that. Okay. Bam. So that's what we're 75 already. So that runs really quickly. So we can already say it's really a quite sporty engine considering also the weight of the car. So those are the different impressions here from both vehicles. Of course, now we can't really compare the consumptions one to one. I have been more active now, a little more agile riding, less motorway driving. But still, it's also important to know what we have for consumption now for you know, this more active riding. It's about 6.3, so just over 6 liters. And um, this is also very interesting, by the way, with the petrol engines, the margin, you know, the, the span mm, between the lowest and the highest consumption is always, you know, super big. And with the diesel engines, it's not that big. So. When you drive this one, you're slower. You've seen we can score like five here. We push a little bit more. We score about six. It's just one liter of difference. Well, with the petrol engine, we sometimes have you know, a variety of four, five, six liters. Sometimes even with bigger cars, when you drive them really conservative or really push them, that is also one of the advantages of the diesel. If you're interested in that. So those were our driving impressions for today. And now to our conclusion for today, the Seat Ibiza with a diesel special for today. First of all, the exterior, I think, to me, I think among best in class, for sure. Very dynamic exterior, especially in the FR line. That also accounts for the interior. And as I said a couple of times, especially with those sports seats, it feels like a bigger car. It has become a little bit bigger, but here you can also get a compact segment comfort also in the small car segment. Then, well, the diesel engines really running very calm. 
they have less consumption than with the petrol engines. Mm, at some point, depending on how your driving style is, maybe the difference is not that huge. So I think it only really pays off when you're driving a lot of kilometers per year. And as the price for the diesel engine is also usually a little bit higher, you can still think about if you go maybe for the 1.5 liter Evo if you're going in the higher price regions. Then DSG or here with the manual today, well it depends then if it's available for the exact engine. DSG of course always adds more comfort, it's just more relaxing to drive but then again it's also an optional feature. Overall I think as also the previous reviews showed you, it's a very convincing car surely among the best in the very segment. Well, here and there they could uh, tweak the interior just a little. Well, with the <laughs> steering wheel position, that's also something, for example, at least uh, in, in the first vehicle we had. And of course, well, consumption for the diesel could be even a little bit lower. And what's also important that they have implement, implemented the, SC, the SCR cleaning for all of the diesel engines. What do you think? Tell me your comments and which one would you actually go for? Diesel, petrol, or the CNG with the Ibiza? Let's discuss that and also join us next time. Thanks.